We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and every Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Rev. Troy Roland for Sunday School at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways for you to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. Service will begin soon.
Good evening and welcome to Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church Facebook Live Tuesday night Bible study where we come with our panel discussion to discuss the Word of God, to get a deeper meaning of what God has in the Word for each and every one of us individually and collectively. We invite you, our audience, to be here with us on every Tuesday. Uh, and we solicit your comments, um, your questions, um, any other type of things you want to do, a heart, thumbs up, a hallelujah, whatever it may be. We want you to interact with us during this study. Um, last week, we started a new study on temptation and how personal temptations are to each and every believer and the importance of knowing temptation in our lives and how do we react to those temptations that come to us. Uh, last week, um, as we opened up this study, we discussed how God does not tempt any man, but that temptation comes from the evil one. God will test us, amen, and sometimes that test could be Satan tempting us. Mm -hmm. So as we continue with this study uh, today, um, we're going to uh, kind of finish up our introduction from last week when we talk about the book of Genesis. And then we will move into our first topic today, which is recognizing weaknesses um, that are in our own personal lives. So without any further ado, I will start with the introduction of our panel, which is customary for us. And I start to my immediate right with Reverend Tanika Williams. Thank you, Reverend Brown. Good evening, Agape Fellowship, and welcome uh, to our second part of our study, Temptation. I look forward to breaking bread with you on this evening and seeing what thus saith the Lord. Amen, amen. And our assistant pastor, assistant pastor Kenneth Williams. Amen. Once again, it's, it's uh, good to be here on this evening. Um, we are looking forward to continuing this uh, study. I think last week we we got into some good stuff and really understanding what temptation is and 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 now we're really going to start diving into uh this study so that hopefully we can reason god's word together and the people of god can grow from from this study amen amen thank you sister pastor williams and our senior pastor pastor david camp uh, good evening everyone and welcome to our bible study uh to start off yield not to temptation mm. for yielding is sin mm. and we'll find out why well, amen. I guess that was a segue. So, uh, so let us now go before the throne of grace and prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for this evening, oh God. We thank you for this Bible study. Lord, we thank you that you give us a mind to study your word and that you come and reason with us as you did with your prophet Isaiah. Oh, God, we are not perfect. Uh, we are stained in many ways, but you will clean us uh, just as you clean him and many, many that have come before us. Mm -hmm. And we are encompassed by such a great cloud of witnesses. And, Lord, tonight, as you bless these panelists and yeah, the Holy Spirit rests upon them, and, and when they open up their mouths, oh, God, and, and we hear what thus saith the Lord, right here in the midst, in the dynamics of this study, and that we hear from uh, those that are out there as well, whatever they may have to share. Oh, God, we thank you. We honor you. We give you all of the praise. Continue to bless our leaders, our nation, our community. Lord, let us learn to live with one another and not let our temptations tear down each other. Mm. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, as we start this uh, study tonight, I just wanted to do a brief uh, recap of where we were from last week, and then we're going to get into um, our last scripture from last week, and then our first um, topic of the three things that we will discuss in this study. So if we could uh, pull up our um, introduction from last week. Um, we talked about um, that we're going to look at temptation and the scriptures that we're going to do, but I want to 
hone in on the fact that, remember, we're going to recognize our weaknesses. We're going to war against those weaknesses. And then we're going to talk about recovering when we fail. Mm. Uh, to emphasize not if we fail, but when we fail. Mm. Um, so I think being realistic uh, about that is so important. Um, with that said, um, let's move into, um, it should be Genesis. As you recall, last week, um, we talked in the study about the five senses that God had given us. We will see many of those senses in this scripture and how um, temptation was so sneaky and tricky in our own minds. Mm -hmm. Let us read Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, the fall. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, <laughs> the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. As humans, we also think and perceive. We're going to start with... Uh, Reverend Williams, Tanika. How fitting. <laughs> wow, they really didn't plan it that way. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, understanding that this is th this is figurative language. So God gave a specific task. He gave that specific task really to Adam. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um who was the, the, the first man. Uh, and so in that specific task or that list of tasks, he also gave some do's and some don'ts. And so one specific don't uh, surrounded a particular figurative tree mm -hmm. that would cause something detrimental to enter into the perfected assignment an environment that God gave Adam uh, and Eve. And the way that we see the downfall of man is that the first thing that happens is that this figure comes in and it instills doubt. So God gives us assignments. He gives us purpose. He gives us some specific do's and don'ts. And then there are things in life that will cause you to question is that really what he said? Is mm -hmm. that really the assignment? Is that really what I'm supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, and so with that, that doubt comes that questioning, comes then that reasoning and that compromising and that justification. And before you know it, you slip into it and you've abandoned what you knew those specific things were, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. what your do's and don'ts were. And that's how things work. That's how mm -hmm. life works. That's how the enemy works. That's how humans work. It'll, it, there's always that, like we talked about last week, there's that desire that was already within you anyway to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but with that, as time passes, you start to justify and you start to doubt and you start to question and you, you get caught up in technicalities because it was simple. It said, but God said, you must not eat of the fruit of, from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. 
But then you follow up with a justification. You will die. Well, you will certain will not certainly die. So like you'll die, but you won't die certainly. You know, you'll <laughs> sort of die. So you start finding all these little technicalities and all this little wordsmithing that you start to do to justify your behavior mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you already wanted to do anyway. Amen. That you knew was not the right thing to do. Um, and then you go and get friends. Amen. Because misery loves company. So you go and say, hey, you know, uh, take take of this <laughs> as well with me. Amen. Even though we know that this is not to do what we were supposed to do. So that's how the creeper thing creeps in. And you talked about the small foxes. And this is a demonstration of how that actually works. So don't just look at it like it's a piece of fruit and like it's a tree. It's anything. Amen. Um, Amen. That is a desire that's in your heart that can lead to death or certainly death. Amen. Amen. Sister Pastor Williams. Um, I think Reverend Williams summed that up pretty good, but um, I, I go back to what we were talking about last week and how we, we you know, we can categorize, you know, this temptation in, in, in three ways. And we were talking about the flesh, you know, um, you know, the eye, and then your pride. Amen. So when you look, um, it says, when the woman saw the fruit was good for food and pleasing to the mm-hmm. eye, mm-hmm. then also desirable Amen. to the flesh mm-hmm. for gaining wisdom because he had talked her into doing something that God had forbidden them to do. Amen. A lot of times what happens with us is that we start focusing, instead of focusing on the things that God allows us to do, Mm -hmm. we start focusing on what God says don't do. So it's almost like children. Um, When my kids were small, fire zone, don't touch the fire. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like when he said don't touch it, it made you want to touch it even the more just because you said don't touch it. And so what he did was, like Reverend Wim said, through the semantics of the wording, Amen. he Amen. tricked her into saying, okay, well, hey, I, I should be able to know this too. Then goes back to, like I said, what we talked about, what we see, mm-hmm. the desire that's within our heart, and then that pride, I believe, to mm-hmm. be, you know, he had talked her into wanting to be just like God. Well, if God knows, you know, about mm-hmm. good and evil, then I want to know about good and evil. Mm-hmm. Amen. And we sometimes forget that God um, protects us from certain things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so if we don't know, it was that old saying, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> so sometimes it's better not to know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're not meant to understand. Amen. Amen. But when we start trying to understand things that we can't fully comprehend, then that's when we start to get in trouble. And here's the thing. We have to remember, being tempted isn't the sin. Mm-hmm. It's when you give into the temptation. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Is when we begin to sin. And mm-hmm. that's what happened here with Eve. And then, like Reverend Williams said, misery loves company. So then, you know, here comes Adam now I got questions about Adam as to, you know, and I get it. Your wife says, here, take this. But he knew, too, because mm-hmm. God had given him the command as well. Mm-hmm. So then why did he turn around and do it, too? So we have to be careful with who we talk to, who we let speak to us. Pastor preached that last Sunday. Who we allowed to speak over our lives mm-hmm. amen because they can bring us into temptation but but i i think the first part that you said about the word being twisted mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that when people offer us something that we know is not in accordance mm-hmm. with the word then regardless of who that person is kind of like what we heard in the sermon today with Joe, his wife says, well, why don't you just go ahead on and curse God? Mm-hmm. Oh, you talk like a foolish woman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Curse God. I ain't about to do that. Mm-hmm. And and I think 
you know, when you were, you know, talking about how the, the words get twisted, um, a lot of times that's how the, you know, the enemy um, tempts us because, you know, like Reverend Williams was saying, it makes it sound the way we really want to hear it mm -hmm. so we can do what we want to do, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then you do go find friends <laughs> that will co-sign for mm -hmm. you. Um, so you can go ahead on and do your mess. And then now you got somebody to blame, mm -hmm. you know, because, well, you, you, you know, it's your fault. You should have told me not. Yeah. Right. Okay. But even in this though, cause I look at this story, you know, we don't really know from the beginning if that was a desire that Eve wanted. Sometimes people can trick us into, or the enemy can trick us into desiring something that we never even thought about before. Until it's presented. Until it's presented. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of things that, you know, people want now, mm -hmm. you don't really want it until you see it. That's marketing. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. you know, I never knew I wanted an Apple Watch until somebody showed me one. And I didn't want it then until they bought me one. And now I'm like, okay, I love it. But at the same time, Again, if you tempt somebody with something, mm -hmm. they may not even know about it. And the way he presented it, Amen. then it turned into her desire. Mm -hmm. Initially, she was being obedient. Yes. Amen. That's a good point. Amen. Amen. Until so we he, got to watch that. Until he drew her focus. Off of on. what God said and mm -hmm. off of what it looked like. Into on what it, into what it looked like. Amen. Amen. Pastor Camps. You know, um, I, I agree with everything that was said. I was looking at this, um, I'm trying to read more into it, the fall. And uh, when you read the, the very first part, the serpent was more crafty or cunning than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. Amen. Meaning, this was not an outsider. It was an inside job. When you look at, you know, we sometimes we look back at this scripture and we, we think of a snake or serpent as what we look at it now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that the serpent is, or the snake is crawling around. Mm -hmm. But at this time, the snake was not crawling around. Amen. Uh, because uh, after, the, after the fall, mm -hmm. the snake was given, this op was given his punishment and what he was supposed to do. But when I went further into it, I started looking at the snake. When you go back into the creation. And in the creation, uh, the serpent was made first. God had made, the, had made the serpent and all the animals and so forth he had made. Then he made Adam. Mm -hmm. And when he made Adam, he said, Adam, you're lonely. Uh, I'm going to give you a helpmate. So then he gave Eve. And uh, it's, it's ironic because this was the first, this passage of scripture was my very first sermon. Amen. And, <laughs> and, and when I did this uh, in the garden, um, I had so much information. And as I was sitting here, I was just writing some things down. So when I'm looking at the serpent, mm -hmm. the serpent which God had made, and so the serpent was not an outsider. So the serpent was at the grassroots level. The, the serpent was beneath uh, Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. And Amen. so then you have uh, the, the serpent, and then the serpent comes to Eve, someone that God said, I make Adam, I'm going to give you Eve as a helpmate because you're alone. I'm going to give you a partner. And so then Eve, the serpent comes to Eve. The, the, now we're looking at the way God created everything. The serpent comes to Eve. And the serpent tempts and deceives Eve. And so we have the, the starting at, at, at different levels. Mm -hmm. We had the grassroots. Then we Amen. get to the woman, which is the next level. And then the man, which is the next level in here. The man who Adam... Uh, Adam was supposed to be the man, the one that God had spoken to. Amen. And so when Eve came, I'm not so much, uh, when I think about the deception. And so I'm getting here, did the serpent really deceive, even though it says deceive, or, or was Adam and Eve or Eve just that comfortable to believe what God had made, that whatever God made had to be good? Amen. I, I'm looking at it from a different standpoint. Amen. So the, I, I think about, the serpent, and she thinking that this has to be good because everything in the garden. So you said well, well, she was naive. Well, or they were, the, the, it's still the tricking of the word, uh -huh. but 
she was able to accept it. Because she didn't know evil yet? No, no. I think the point that Pastor Camps makes is a very good point and is very true today. People that we know and we normally trust, Mm -hmm. if they bring something to us, Uh and even though we kind of question it in our mind, we still are uh, apt to go along with what they're saying. Exactly. And then what we do, we let our barriers down from mm-hmm. what we know, mm-hmm. but we just assume that God, well, God God created this, and God has this under control, so therefore maybe mm-hmm. there's some truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you let your guards down. Mm-hmm. And so now you have the sin starting at the very grassroots, moving up, and then Adam, when mm-hmm. Eve came to him as his helpmate, mm-hmm. he, didn't, he didn't respond. He just went through with it, mm-hmm. when in fact he knew already. Mm-hmm. So you, starting from the bottom... The sin creeped in, and the fall happened from every level. Mm, so, so, so you know, I guess my, my, my question is, because now if you look at verse 5, it says, God knows, Satan said to him, God, God knows, or the serpent said, God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it, and then you will be like God, knowing both good and evil at that time. They didn't know evil. Mm-hmm. All they knew was what? good amen so it's almost like he threw evil in there right there at the end so if you're really not paying attention everything that god created was what good now we know now that all things work together for our good Mm -hmm. but not all things are good but but see even in that even though they didn't know good they didn't know evil yet Mm -hmm. god had given them the capability to, uh, to, to know good and evil, just like he did with the serpent. It says that he created the serpent. Mm-hmm. He created, and, and he was more cunning. And so at this time here, when you're looking at the serpent being around, maybe the serpent understood some of his, began to understand his craftiness, mm-hmm. or began to understand that he had some type of, not power per se, but yeah, some, some type of power. Mm-hmm. Because we do know that on, on Sunday, when we talk about uh, the, the uh, sons and daughters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. came together, and we know that Satan was kicked out along with some other angels. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there was something crafty, and the, the serpent was allowed to go. And just as Job, when we start thinking about Job, Job, God said Job is righteous. He's upright. Mm-hmm. He's not going to go for it. Mm-hmm. His creation were new, and they trusted. I, I want to believe that Adam and Eve trusted God because even when you get to the point when they recognized Mm -hmm. that they were naked, Mm -hmm. they went to hide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they didn't understand it, something in the inside told them to go hide. And and look, this this is a sermon in itself that (laughs) Mm -hmm. but um, the the point is that it was not something from the outside. But I do think Pastor I think you head on, they you know, they may not have known good and evil, but they did know obedience and disobedience mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that they knew amen so as we talk about temptation really at the essence of it from the beginning it's about obedience and disobedience because if we're obedient unto god mm-hmm. you see what i'm saying then we're gonna know okay if god said this this is what i'm going to do regardless of what you say you say you say but again crafty cunning, you and, know, and, 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 and got them to think, you know, see it in a different way. It's mm-hmm. the eyesight that you, you know, it's almost, mm-hmm. we don't know how long Adam and Eve were in the garden mm-hmm. at this time. Mm-hmm. True. And, but we do know that they understood that the fruit was good mm-hmm. and that they, they ate and they didn't have anything to worry about. Do you know that when we get money and we all of a sudden get to the point where sometimes we forget where we got it from? And it becomes ours, and we start talking about me, myself, and I. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we find ourselves falling. Could it be that God had given them everything? You know, when we give our children everything and don't show them discipline, but we just keep giving, that at some point, then disobedience comes, Mm -hmm. uh, disobeying comes. And then I'm seeing this here where they, they had everything. Everything was theirs. But there was something else. Well... That sounds good. I want to try that. I want that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When they already had all that they needed. And even mm-hmm. with us, 
we've got to understand when we have all that we need, we've got to stop striving to get, to get more and get more, something that might not even be ours to have. Hmm. Amen. So we can Amen. talk Amen. about that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, well, you know, I was going to, uh, you know, make the comment based on all of the comments. We kind of see this as a running theme through Scripture. Um, there are always those who come to turn things around. You know, we, we Scripture talking about itching ears. There will come a time when people will have itching ears that they want to hear something that is not true, mm -hmm. but it, it gives them permission to mm -hmm. do what they want to mm -hmm. do. You know, Paul the Apostle, he had to tell the people, hey, watch out for Hermenius. They have fallen away from the faith. They become false teachers. It tells us to watch out for false prophets. This is a running theme that the triggers in us, and I use the word triggers, those things that we like and kind of want to do, if we can get just an inch of justification, mm -hmm. we will go after it. Well, you know, when we listen to where much is given, uh -huh. much is required, where uh, it, it, it's harder for a rich man Amen. to get into heaven, mm -hmm. where the, the more you have, there's more required for you to give. And if you acquire these things and you start getting stingy and don't want to give, it's just like our tithe. It's easy to tithe when you make $100. $10, okay, I'll do that. But when you start making 100000 and you got to tithe 10000 amen, it becomes harder. And so in the garden, if, if it had become harder and you, want, you, you crave, there's this craving for more, and you're right, throughout the scriptures it tells us that it almost appears that when you get more, you're, you're setting yourself up for, for sin or setting yourself up to, to want more and to sin, not setting yourself up for sin, right. but, but to sin. Well, it's funny how you said that with the money. I said, God really can truly use the, way, the ways of the wicked to confound the wise. All I could think about was Biggie Small saying, more money, more problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. That's mm -hmm. that. I was like, because you're right. Sometimes the more, you know, that you you receive, um, the more responsibility that comes with it. So that is also why we have to, because at the essence, I, I do believe this is this is when it comes to temptations about obedience and disobedience, we have to know the instructions. So that's why we have got to stay in God's word Amen. so that, you know, we can, you know, really know what he's asking us and telling us to do so we don't fall for those false prophets or that, fall, or that twisting of, of God's word to make it look one way mm -hmm. when God is really telling you something totally different and, you know, it says it right here in the word. So, Sister Pastor Williams, you have brought us right into our next scripture gotcha. and our first topic. How do we recognize our weaknesses? Mm. <laughs> Amen. First Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verses 7 through 13. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality. And some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. Mm. We should not test Christ, mm. as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Mm. No temptation has overtaken you except 
what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide provide a way out so that you can endure it. So I, I list four questions. Are we weak to worship other things? Are we weak to sexual desire? Are we weak to making God prove who he is? Are we weak to complaining, gossip, and backbiting as we go through this scripture? We're going to start with a assistant pastor. Wood. Well, again, um, like you said, it was a good segue. Um, he gave us instructions here. You know, he warned us about those things. You know, we can't crave evil things, um, you know, w- you know, or, or, or worship idols. Um, I think that that one is uh, very important um, for people to pay attention to. And we might even have to do a study on what idol is idolatry, idolatry mm-hmm. because sometimes you can put many things above God. Amen. And it would seem right. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. Um, but, th- but it was a warning. And then he also, you know, you know, Paul told him, like, this is what happened when they did it. And then he said, do not put, um, we should not test Christ. My version um, I'm reading is a uh, uh, New Living Translation says, nor should we put Christ to the test. Amen. As some of them did, and then they died by snake bites. In other words, a lot of times, I feel like when we become Christians, we start to get a relationship just like with anybody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have a tendency to become comfortable. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we forget the fear Mm -hmm. of the Lord. Amen. We forget that God is to be feared and feared in a way that's respected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it also goes back to our last study on grace. Right. Where we talked about not mishandling, misusing mm -hmm. grace. Amen. And so as he's saying, okay, don't, don't, don't test, don't test Christ. Because, you know, there are. And all will always will be some consequences Amen. to Amen. your actions. Amen. Sometimes God may lessen the blow, mm-hmm. or sometimes God may allow you to recover what you may have lost. Mm-hmm. But there are consequences yes. to what we choose yes. to do, whether it's good or whether it's bad. Yes. Um, and so then he talked about us, you know, and I, and I like the questions that you pose, you know, a lot of people, you know, passed the priest about Job, although Job did not curse his God and die. Amen. If you read that, Job did kind of grumble a little bit. Amen. He was kind of like, look, God, how are you going to allow all this and this and this and this and this? Mm-hmm. But God showed him what? Grace. You know, is, is, is examples. Um, we have to be able to stand strong. And then I, I think we have to also begin to praise God because the, the temptation is going to come. Mm-hmm. But then he says, I'm never going to allow you to be tempted more than you can bear. Amen. And I'm going to give you a way of an escape. Amen. Amen. Which means you have the choice on whether or Amen. not you, he put it back in your hands. Amen. 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 Mm-hmm. Reverend Tanika Williams. I, I want to look at specifically verse 13, and I like the way that it's delivered in um, it's delivered in the New Living Translation. It says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience, and God is faithful. So, 
what you're going through, what we all go through, it, 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 it's, it's understandable. It's not new. It's human. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we go up to verse 11, these things happen to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. So there's a record mm-hmm. that even what we're enduring mm-hmm. is not new under the sun. And it's, it, it is it is human. It is to be alive. It is to be on this earth. It is to be a spirit wrapped up in flesh on this earth in this era. So Amen. the same temptations have been around. They may have gotten a little bit more savvy, a little bit more convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, they may have upgraded here and there Amen. Um, so that they fit the time period. But the foundation of it is still the same. We can still go back to those three things that we talked about last week, how it comes into our eyes, how it takes over our flesh. So those concepts are not new. Amen. Amen. It is all the same. And when we look at our weaknesses as human beings, are we weak to all those four categories? Absolutely. We can all be weak to those four categories. Mm -hmm. But how it operates in our life depends on our uniqueness as individuals Mm -hmm. and how we respond. But God does give us, like Pastor Lewis was saying, a choice. A choice in how we respond to these things. Going back to the garden, Eve could have very much said, I understand that you're right. Certainly die and die are not necessarily the same thing, but Mm -hmm. the outcome Mm -hmm. of death is still the same. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's a technicality and she could have chosen Mm -hmm. to have walked away, but she chose otherwise. And then she brought others along with her. So we have to be careful about our choices and understand that that choice does lie within us. And we can resist. It's not easy to resist. Amen. And depending on how deep you are in that thing and depending on what that weakness is and how much it has you, Mm -hmm. it is not easy to walk away. Some sin, some weakness, some temptations can completely alter even our very DNA. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we have to be careful of the choices that we make in all of this. And so I think it's important to know it's all human. What we feel, it, it, it's not unnatural. It's not new. It's just how do we deal with it? Amen. I, I think as, you know, listening to you as you were saying that, um, you know, I could hear there is light in the word, therefore we are not in darkness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But as it said in the book of the John, some men preferred the dark. Mm-hmm. better than the light mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um and i think that's where we lie in that choice mm-hmm. of are we gonna be in the light and allow ourselves to escape mm-hmm. or are we gonna prefer that darkness and walk right down all the way into it? amen going back to even what amen. pastor Williams was saying last week about you know some people say that you know they were just miserable in a world of sin that's a lie not everybody was miserable in their sin. Some mm-hmm. people enjoyed Amen. that sensation. They enjoyed that pleasure. They mm-hmm. enjoyed that secret. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. One, one thing before you move to Pastor Camps, and actually this has to do with Pastor Camps. A few weeks ago, he preached a sermon, Faithful. Yes. God is faithful. Um, one way that we have to, one way that we have, to deal with temptation is understanding that God is faith, uh, faithful, mm-hmm. but we have to be faith filled mm-hmm. yes. in order to deal with this temptation that Amen. comes. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was rich. Pastor Camps. Um, again, I'm looking at this here and uh, verse 12 here says, if you think, and we go back to uh, the thinking process. Amen. In the Garden of Eden, uh, mm-hmm. they started thinking. Yes. <laughs> when the serpent said, they started thinking. Yes. Here, we, he says, if you think you are standing firm, if you think you are perfect, if you think that you got it going on already, Amen. it's telling you 
be careful Amen. that you don't fall because now you're starting to think beyond mm -hmm. Amen. The, what mm -hmm. God has told you. And so when it went into, it said, uh, you asked those three questions, worship other things, mm -hmm. meaning uh, that is a form of loving something else more than you love God. And then in the scripture, it says we should not commit to sexual immortality, immorality. Then I was looking at, I said, let me go back after mm -hmm. Reverend Tadika Williams said, some, said something about another translation. <laughs> I went back to the, the New Living, and it says, we must not engage in sexual immorality. Then I went to the contemporary language. It says that we, may, we must not do something that we're shameful for. Then I went to the modern language, and it says, again, we must not commit to sexual commitment. So when we start looking at these things here, Sin is not something that you're living in misery. Again, what Reverend uh, uh, Tanika Williams. Said. Yeah. Sin is something that we love. Mm -hmm. Sin is something that 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 we just do. So when you went to the bottom part about complacency, what what is that last statement? Complaining, 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 gossip, gossip and backbiting. Mm -hmm. We love to complain. <laughs> we love to gossip because we think that gossip is making. We're getting more information. Thinking, helping us think. We we love that. Amen. Backbiting. We if somebody say they don't love the backbite, because if you didn't love the backbite, you wouldn't do it. That's when we start talking about temptation. Temptation Amen. is something that we like to do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be tempted. And so when you read all of these things here, that that not commit. Now I want to throw something to the panel. <laughs> <laughs> throw, it, throw it. Not commit to sexual. Does that mean that you can do it as long as you're not committing to it? Well, well, in this case, because the other one says should not. Go ahead. In this case, commit means to do the action. So, in other words, okay, you got your right <laughs> blinker on. You're in the lane where it goes straight or turns right. Your right blinker's on. Mm -hmm. Are you going to actually turn right, or are you going to change your mind and go straight? Mm. Mm -hmm. So here, mm -hmm. this commit means to do the action. Well, not I just to be I, in iniquity where you constantly are in sexual immorality. So, so, so now we get to, let's go to the garden. Okay. Mm -hmm. God did not really say, uh, it didn't really say that you should not commit, I mean, that you should not do sexual immorality. Uh-huh. Or sexual deviant behavior, however we want to put it, it just does, says, "Don't commit to it, don't don't give in to it, don't love it." You you see how we could take some words. So, amen. That's where it's got to be, where we've got to make sure that we're studying to show ourselves approved. Because I like what Pastor did. You went through three, four different versions, mm -hmm. three, four different versions of man's interpretation of what mm -hmm. God is saying. So mm -hmm. like I'm looking at the uh, New Living Translation and it says do not engage in sexual immorality. Amen. It tells you do not engage. But like you said one version may say something that you can take and just take that little piece. That commit. I, 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 will, I will help you. But I'm not going to commit to it. Right. I, I, <laughs> right, 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 right. Just in case I want to change. Right. right. So, I mean, the biggest thing is that as we're looking at all of this and the things that God is telling us to do, it is very important that we, you have to study. And that's what I was going to come to that point right there, uh, Assistant Pastor Williams is. Mm -hmm. this, this thing about the word of God, if your weakness is that you are not very learned in the word of God. You better recognize real quick mm -hmm. if that's a weakness in your life. Mm -hmm. Come on. Because not knowing the word of God will have you strung out to and fro mm -hmm. by every wave and doctrine mm -hmm. that comes along. Because one minute you heard this, the next minute you heard that, and then you heard somebody else, and I was watching TV, and they said this and what. If you don't know the word of God, mm -hmm. that is a weakness mm -hmm. 
for you to be set up to fall into temptation. And that's why he goes and says, study to show yourself approved. You. Mm-hmm. And even when you're in church mm-hmm. Amen. and on. the preacher is preaching, on, it is more than just sitting in church and listening to the preacher. You've got to go and study right. the word because you if I tell right you now. something, if I tell you and I'm preaching, I'm saying, we should not commit to sexual morality. Okay, what you hear, mm-hmm. it might not be what, what the word is really saying. Right. And so if you just hear it one time and you don't go back and look at it mm-hmm. and, and, and study, right, then you, then you would regurgitate yeah. something that it might not be. Absolutely. And then you'll pass exactly. false information mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. because exactly. you didn't do it for yourself. Right. So we even in, we're in church, and I got to say that because some people regurgitate everything that the pastor said. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. And if they don't study it, and I do believe that those that can't read, that there's an intervention that the Holy Spirit reveals to you when you go to the Holy, when you go to Him and and start asking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it's still something that you have to a- do, amen. even though you may not have you might because a lot of people used to turn away from the Bible because the King James Version is something that they can't read mm-hmm. because they start uh, and I used to be one of them. I start reading a couple of thousand th- and and I start falling asleep. Mm-hmm. And, and, and one thing, since you brought that up, Pastor, I can share it on the airway. <laughs> um, I started out like that, and um, so I read a different translation for a while till I got accustomed mm-hmm. to the understanding, and then I went back exactly. and read the King James mm-hmm. Version. So mm-hmm. for people, you know, um, someone asked me this the other day. They said, oh, you know, they, 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 they said, you know, King James is difficult. I said, well, start with a different translation. Read it for a while. And then as the spirit works with you and you get good understanding. Say that one more time. Then go back to the King James. So, so start with a different translation and you read it for a while. The Holy Spirit will reveal the word of God to you in the mm-hmm. understanding. And then go back to the King James, and then you will pick up small words Mm -hmm. that make a difference Mm -hmm. in what God meant. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you're starting out, start out with a translation that's easily understandable, and then the Lord will take you back to the King James. Because literally, I will tell you, the Holy Spirit said, okay, put that down and go back and, Mm -hmm. and start from the beginning. And read mm-hmm. the King James. Mm-hmm. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, this has been very, very, very good today. Um, as we have opened up um, with our first topic is how do we recognize our weaknesses? How do we recognize our weaknesses relative to temptation? Uh, I am going to take closing remarks uh, now from our panelists. And I will start with Reverend Tanika Williams. Amen. So temptation. This has been a rich study. And, <laughs> and, and I'm looking forward to, to continuing this discussion because we these are things that we deal with every day. Right now Amen. you're being tempted. You don't even realize it, but you're being tempted. And when you walk away, you will be tempted. Uh, temptation is all around us. So how do we work with these snares that come on every end or every side how do we resi- we resist the enemy so that he can flee uh even if the enemy is our own personal desires um Amen. and so working with that and understanding that is not new what you feel is is not new and it is to be human but how do we work with that? So I look forward to continuing that discussion and in, in, in the study. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Williams. Amen. Assistant Pastor Williams. We 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 learned um in the introduction last week that God will not tempt us, but God will test us. Yes. And so it's important for us, like with any type of test, um, my, my oldest uh son is in college right now. He's got a, he had exams last week. Or this coming up week, but he had them papers last week and he was stressing. <laughs> and but the whole thing about it was he studied. Yes. He studied so that he would know mm-hmm. and he could pass the test. Mm-hmm. So what we have to do is 
we have to study God's word so that we're not tempted to go against or be disobedient unto God. And that's one way of beginning to uh, deal with your temptations. But at the same time, we also have to be honest with ourselves. What are our weaknesses? Mm -hmm. What do are we really dealing with? Mm -hmm. So then God can help us find a solution. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's good. Pastor Camp. I started out today by saying yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. And I hope that when you give in to those desires that make you feel good all the time. Now, I'm not saying that following Christ is going to make you feel bad, Amen. but you know that when you're yielding, you know that when you're giving in to temptation. And so today, I hope that we understand that we have to be on guard. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we can't, uh, be, because Satan is going to and fro, yes. finding who he, whom he can devour. Yes. Amen. And what he's finding is those things that he knows somewhat that, that we're struggling with. Mm -hmm. And if we're struggling with it, he'll find a way that he can get into it. And just as in the garden, just as in the scriptures that we read today, that the serpent knew mm -hmm. that they were enjoying what they knew. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and when you, in, if you got money and you enjoy money and somebody's going to tell you how to get more, what do you do? You invest what you have and you go get. God's, God doesn't operate like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we try to make God operate the way we, the, what, what the world shows us. Mm -hmm. And he's not, he's just saying, be faithful. Amen. Mm -hmm. Do the things that you're supposed to do. Be obedient to him. Amen. And stop overthinking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we overthink something, and when we start overthinking, we give in to our own desires mm -hmm. because there's a spot. Mm -hmm. That might be something I can do. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then you wind up finding yourself sinning. My Amen. God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, there you have it for tonight. Recognizing the weaknesses in our life concerning temptation. I hope this study tonight. Um, on this first topic of three um, that was um, so, so um, um, analyzed and highlighted by the panelists tonight and uh, so many different facets in the life of any believer um, that we are all susceptible because of these eyes, uh, these hands, these smells, all of these different things that can at some point tickle our fancy, tickle your fancy, whatever it may be. Uh, temptation is real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The devil is real. Mm -hmm. Even as the uh, pastor preached today, hell is real. Uh, so let this be personal and a place where we have our own inner honesty. Um, about what's the truth about what really gets us going. Mm. Um, and that, as Assistant Pastor Williams says, that it's something to pray about and ask about to get a hold of. It doesn't go away because the flesh stays with us. But we can have some good Christ management in our lives <laughs> to manage that <laughs> temptation. And getting it under control is really the key because it's not going anywhere. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh, gracious and heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you uh, for this very, very good study um, tonight, oh God, on temptation and recognizing the weaknesses in ourselves. God, I'm glad that the scripture says when I'm weak, then you're strong, because you give us all the strength that we can overcome. And that we have not been tempted where we cannot escape. Mm. God, let us look for the escape route. Let us look for the exit. Let us get off at the off ramp, oh Lord, before we, we head down to that 23 car pile up and wonder, how did we get here? Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, thank you for all that have listened to this study tonight. Bless our panelists as the Holy Ghost has used them mightily. 
uh, in this word and in this study. And I pray that believers everywhere would continue to study your word and search and find and know who God is in their lives and that they would, oh God, use that word and be honest with themselves and just be humble as the man who fell down on his knees and struck his breast. And he said, oh Lord, I'm a sinner. And Christ said, this man is justified. So Lord, let us be there. Let us be there, always looking up, needing your help, and receiving it with open arms. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And uh, I thank all of the panelists once again and everyone who is here. Uh, this is Agape Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church. And here at Agape, love is, is what, what we do. do. God bless you. Good night and have a good evening. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-preaching church. We are Agape Fellowship, a church where love is what we do. Pastor David Camp Sr. and the Agape Church family welcomes everyone to our sanctuary for 10 a.m. Sunday morning worship service and for Tuesday night Bible study at 6 p.m. You can also continue to join us virtually every Sunday and Tuesday. For those joining us inside of the sanctuary on the first and third Sundays and Tuesdays, we will observe the three W's. The following ministries will remain virtual. Start each morning with prayer on the daily prayer call at 9 a.m. Receive your weekly soul food with Rev. Troy Roland for Sunday School at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings via YouTube. There are multiple ways to worship with us through giving. Follow us at Agape Fellowship BC on Facebook and Agape Fellowship MBC on YouTube. For more information, visit our website at www.agapefellowshipchurch.org. Thank you for joining us. We will see you soon.